I'm convinced that the people who lived here before we became modern understood that this planet was alive, that they had to interact with it on a way that would sustain them on a daily basis. People are understanding that climate really is in fact coming alive. It's impacting their everyday life. Climate is changing, and that changing climate means that climate is alive. It's a breathing, everyday, real-time experience for every one of us on the planet. It's impacting so many things we're dependent upon. It is now so important for us to understand what's happening. People are now beginning to understand that this climate information is very important to them and that they have to plan business strategies around what may be happening in the future. We've made heavy use of the data that NCDC provides, especially planning as it relates to weather or climate impacts range from day to day to 10 years to 20 years and even 30 years as the storms get more severe. And as we plan into the future, we want to make sure that the infrastructure we're putting in is capable of withstanding as much of the damages that occur from weather. We've had 60 years of the National Climatic Data Center based in Asheville. We have the broadband development here. We have the greatest biodiversity in North America here in the region. There's no more perfect location to understand, study, apply climate responsiveness than the Southern Appalachian region and based in the economic center of Asheville. The archive at Asheville is the largest environmental archive in the world. We're the most critical element in the link of observing and then eventually predicting climate. Today we have satellites that orbit the Earth, buoys on the ocean, radar, balloons. We have new networks like the Climate Reference Network that will ensure the quality of the climate record in decades to come. The credibility of the National Climatic Data Center is extraordinary. There's an area of storminess near Bermuda right now. So. It's built its credibility within a highly developed technological and scientific environment within NOAA and other federal agencies. And you look at the biodiversity of this region and the federal agencies that we have here, it's an extraordinary competence in addition to all the creative and the educational capacity that we have to deliver the product of that competence. Tied in with the record setting heat is the persistent drought that's taking place in the southeastern U.S. How do you get that information about climate into the hands of policymakers and everyday people so we understand it and we understand how important it is? That gap is bridged by the folks who then take that information and mold it and massage it in a way that we can understand and visually see. If we could use this type of information to determine what buildings would be flooded. We can see in this case all of the buildings in this community in a 100 year flood event are going to be impacted by the flood. People understand words on one level but when you get groups of people together we can all really share visual experiences much more effectively. Uh, what you're looking at is the geodome. It's an immersive projection system. By visualizing it, by using it with storytelling, we can help people to really understand what science is telling us about our planet. Visualizations are so powerful because they affect the way we perceive reality. When you turn on the television set and you see things happening in the world, you see the polar ice caps shrinking, it has a very powerful effect on people. With simulations and visualizations of scientific data, it allows us to simulate phenomena before they occur. We can actually take live real-time data and then plug it into our hydro models and then actually simulate what we were just seeing on the other screens. For the first time, the things that live on the planet are changing the physical climate. And the physical climate is having an impact on the people who are living here and the ecosystems that are part of our biosphere. As Katrina approached the peninsula of Florida, it was a category one hurricane. And as it came across the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, you saw how it rapidly increased in intensity. How do you plan for change? If change occurs, how quickly will it happen? These are all questions that we'll have to start answering very quickly not just in everyday business and everyday life, but in policy as well. Asheville is a unique opportunity where the scientists and the computing experts 
in the government archive and private sector business who see the value in that data come together to then turn that into the information that is sent to society. Climate change, as far as a science, is not as important as how climate change is going to impact the rest of the world that we live in. So we have a great opportunity to combine the climate data with that environmental data set. Let's add people on top of that. We've talked about the scientists, the mappers, the wonderful artist community that we have, filmmakers, animators. We have that passionate group of people that are very interested in environmental sustainability and the skill sets to be able to tell the stories that are very important for the decision makers to really understand. All of those issues come together to make Asheville truly the climate center of our nation.